Welcome back to Echo Ridge. Today, we're gonna learn how to tame metal volcanoes. And we're gonna do so by using a variety of methods. Everything from the highly efficient and complex method popularized by Tony Advanced Tony years and years ago, to quicker and easier to build methods, to hybrid methods that fall somewhere in between. To start off with, we're gonna begin with this simple copper volcano example. I have an insulated tile box around our volcano that's liquid locked in. And as you can see, it is a vacuum in here. And we're gonna start with this copper volcano because I'm gonna show you just how simple it is to tame metal volcanoes. We're gonna start off by putting a bunch of water inside this room. Notice that the insulated tile is on the same level as the neutronium. This will help heat that water up much quicker because as the copper volcano produces all that molten copper, it'll be in instant contact with all the water sitting here and will create a lot of steam. Speaking of which, we're gonna need a couple of steam turbines. Now in this example, I'm putting them off to the side because this room is only three tiles high. If I were to put a steam turbine right here, it would quickly overheat that steam turbine even if you were actively cooling it with a thermal aqua tuner because of where the molten copper is coming out. Now, as for the amount of water I'm gonna be putting into this room, I like to go around 50 to 60 kilos worth of steam pressure. And in order to figure that out, we figure out how big the room's gonna be when it's finished. In this case, it has an area of 45 tiles. Well, with my handy dandy calculator, I can take that 45 tiles, multiply it by our desired steam pressure. So let's say 50 kilos worth of steam pressure. And you can see we're gonna need a total of 2,250 kilos worth of water. Well, we know that the bottom of this, in other words, where the water is landing is 15 tiles. So we then can just divide this by 15 and we now know that every tile has to have 150 kilos worth of water. As they are doing that, we'll continue to hook up our steam turbines using some insulated liquid pipes. We'll drop a vent right here. And then I just so happen to have a connection to our main power spine and I will plug in our steam turbines and that way the power that they are generating will be sent back to the grid. And after a short time, we have about 150 kilos worth of water in each tile. So we'll deconstruct our bottle emptier. And guess what? This metal volcano is tamed. We'll uncork it. And as a reminder, two tiles in and two tiles up is the tile that prevents the copper volcano from erupting. So you always want to make sure when you are digging out around your colony that you leave that tile undug. If we wanted to, we could seal up the room. In this case, we really don't have to because I have naphtha on the outside and it'll give us convenient access to be able to get in here to grab some of that copper if we really wanted to. And two seconds until magic happens, Copper Volcano starts producing all that wonderful molten copper. It instantly lands in the water, turning into its solid form. And you'll notice all of that water is slowly starting to heat up. It'll probably take a couple of eruptions for the water in here to get hot enough. Give me a quick second while we go supersonic to get you there. Notice the copper is already down to about 80 degrees and it was originally erupting at 2200. Our water is up to about 63. After its second eruption, we have a little bit of steam, but the majority of the water is still sitting around 74 degrees and the heat is once again being drained out of the copper. After three eruptions, all the water has been vaporized and now our copper is losing temps much more slowly because it is sitting in a gas instead of a liquid. Here's another eruption and we finally have a steam turbine that has hot enough steam to be able to run. All that nice fresh water is coming out of the steam turbines, heading back into the chamber, which is keeping it relatively cool. And while this system will work for quite some time, there are a couple of problems with it in the very long term. First, we don't have any active cooling for our steam turbines. And as you can see, this steam turbine is already up to 33 degrees. And while they would last quite a long time just sitting in this atmosphere, over the long term, they would end up heating this entire area up. Secondly, this copper is at 570 degrees. Not exactly the easiest to work with. So we can solve both of those problems with our next example. And that is using this system here. And this is probably one that a lot of newer players start with immediately. Same sort of box, except in this case, we have a thermo aqua tuner. And the thermo aqua tuner serves two points. First, it keeps the steam turbines cold. Second, it's keeping the metal plates inside of our debris chiller nice and cold as well. 
You'll also notice another difference with the Iron Volcano is that I have three steam turbines over it. Because it is four tiles high, I can put the steam turbine directly over it. I'm also using a rail system that grabs all the iron from the Iron Volcano. We filtered around the steam chamber to try to draw as much heat out of the iron as possible and then send it into the chiller. The way this works, since the metal tiles are so cold, it cools down the iron to a target temperature of 25 degrees. But if the iron is lower than 30 degrees, once it hits this conveyor shut off, this conveyor rail thermo sensor says, hey, let it pass and it gets dropped off right here. Otherwise, it bypasses the conveyor shut off and heads around and around. This bridge ensures that no new iron joins the debris chiller while the old iron is still being chilled. To get a better look at this, and considering this volcano has 60 cycles before it becomes active again, we're going to go back down to our copper volcano and add a couple of these systems one by one. First is our thermo aqua tuner, made out of steel of course because this area is very hot, and it is a standard thermo aqua tuner setup with the liquid pipe thermo sensor. We connect the automation and now we're going to be ready for our cooling loop. We know we need to cool the steam turbines, but we also want to cool that metal. So we'll add a simple debris chiller down here. I happen to have access to cobalt, which is the bee's knees. And so I'll start building it as well. I'm also going to need power for the thermo aqua tuner. And since I have access to our grid, I'm just going to add a large power transformer, flip some of this around. And now I have access to a power leg and we'll just plug the thermo aqua tuner right in. Now, in this case, I'm also using gold because I have a lot of gold and it has a melting point of a thousand degrees and it'll never get over a thousand degrees in here because of our steam turbines. Now we'll start putting in all of our radiant liquid pipes since we know where our debris chiller is going to go and where our steam turbines are. And don't worry about the duplicates working inside of the steam sauna without suits. They have great health care. Coming directly out of the aqua tuner, I'm going to cool the debris chiller first and I'm going to bring it to about this point here and then utilize insulated tiles once again to come all the way back up here to our steam turbines, bridge it on over, and then back into our thermal aqua tuner. And without much effort, our cooling loop is complete. Now it's time to get the rails. Start off with a steel auto sweeper, ensuring it is close enough to be able to pick up this pile right here, but not too close to the volcano where a heat spike might end up damaging it. Although the likelihood of that happening with all the steam pressure is very low, better be safe than sorry. We'll also add our conveyor loader, and I'll get a little closer with this because I want to maximize the amount of space that we can run these rails. And I'm going to run them all through the steam chamber and then bring them back out into the debris chiller, following the same path as all of our wonderful coolant. Now, there are two methods when using a debris chiller that you can use. One is to make the iron continuously loop through, or two is you can just have it sit here until it gets cold enough. Well, when you're using a conveyor rail thermo sensor, it's important to have it loop through because if a piece is small enough and ends up sitting here on this conveyor rail thermo sensor rail tile, the thermo sensor won't be able to read the temperature and your whole system will get backed up. I'm going to show you a system later where we don't have to do this, but for now we do. So we're engineering a system that if in this case the copper is cold enough, it will come directly out here and just drop. If it's not, it's going to bypass the conveyor shutoff and head all the way around and back into the loop. Now, as a point, this loop connects into the output of this bridge. And remember, bridges will only output from, in this example, this main line, if the rail is free. We also use this bridge in this case because it was convenient to be able to get under the other rail, but also to provide direction for the rail system after this point because otherwise there's an input here and an output here. So all the rails would think it needs to go this way. We also need to make sure we connect it with some automation. And then we'll say if the copper is below 30 degrees, let it pass. We'll also need some power for this system. Luckily, we have an entire transformer dedicated. We also need to power the conveyor shutoff and the auto sweeper. Just another reason why it's a great idea to have your main power spine brought all the way up to your steam turbines because then you can just put a large power transformer right here and all your power needs are going to be met for the entire metal volcano system. With the rest of the rails and the pipes in, we can then seal this whole thing off. I wanted to take note that during the last eruption, both steam turbines are running, producing over 250 watts. We got 270 here and about 
and we had about 225 here. So almost 500 watts of just free power for putting a couple of steam turbines over the metal volcano. But once again, this copper is a little too hot to use at 652 degrees. During its dormancy cycle, this copper would get a lot lower in temp, but it'd never get lower than the minimum running temperature of the steam turbine, which is 125 degrees. Hence the reason we're going through the trouble of building this system to get that copper nice and low. We'll surround and wrap this with some insulated tiles, and then we'll fill our cooling loop. With our cooling loop finished, we can now turn on our thermo aqua tuner. And remember, this is the temperature that's gonna control how cold that metal will be able to get. And we don't want it the same amount as this thermo sensor. We want it a little bit lower. So in this case, we're gonna keep that coolant at 25 degrees. And it works out great because the thermo aqua tuner is just helping the volcano create more heat that's being gobbled up by the steam turbine. And it doesn't take too long at all for these metal tiles to get down to temps. We're already heading south of 30 degrees, which means we're ready to start picking up some copper. On our conveyor loader, we'll go to refined metal, copper. All that copper is then loaded on the rail, which is really going to help spread some of that temperature around this steam room. And it's entering the loop just as we expected. Notice that the copper on the rails is instantly brought down to some very decent temps. Thermo sensor is going to get its chance to shine, checks each amount. Yep, it's plenty cold enough. Go ahead and spit it out. Now, because we have so much copper because of our back stock, these metal tiles will end up eating up. Hence the reason they're going to go back around onto the loop. And when that happens, notice all of this copper sits, which is great because these steam turbines get more of an opportunity to cool it down. Now, some of the advanced and expert level players will have noticed one of the disadvantages of this system already. The copper is leaving the steam room right now at over 250 degrees. And this is copper that's been sitting here for a minute. And while the metal tiles and the thermo aqua tuner don't have much of a problem continuing to chill all this metal, all of the power potential left in this copper that, for instance, is sitting at 337 degrees is gone. Furthermore, we're actually paying to chill it by using the thermo aqua tuner. What if there was a way to leave all the copper in here to draw as much of the temperature out as possible before we brought it into a chiller? That is where this magnificent system comes in. Now, full disclaimer, the original design on this system was created by Tony Advanced Tony several years ago, and the community has sort of championed it as the de facto and default metal volcano tamer. And not only is this system very efficient, it's also self-powered. It is not connected to the grid. We're doing some very similar things in here. Notice our rails go all the way around here, where the gold in this case is eventually dropped here, and we have it coming out at around 30 degrees. But where this system thrives is in the fact that all this gold is sitting on this rail, and this rail doesn't move until a timer sensor tells it to. In this case, it's set to one second out of every 75. After 75 seconds, it turns green once and spits some more gold out, which causes another piece of gold to come out of the conveyor loader and then go through this system. Now, the reason why it's set like that is because we need to always make sure this smart battery has power. And by allowing the system to cool and control the flow of the gold through it at such a steady pace means this thermo aqua tuner is not going to have to run very often. Neither are the auto sweeper and the conveyor loader. And it also gives us an opportunity to make sure everything stays as cool as possible. Let's take a look at the liquid flow first. You can see it's a standard cooling loop. In this case, we're using polluted water. But notice we're going a lot further through this room. And that's because there's a bunch of gold sitting in this room too. Notice this gold comes in at 97 degrees, but by the time it gets to the end of this chain, it's at 29. In fact, it gets there pretty quickly with only this piece of gold still being up at 30 degrees. And that's because it also goes through this metal tile system, which is being cooled by the exhaust from the steam turbines. So these metal tiles are sitting at around 100 degrees. So our gold in this case goes from 200 degrees in this room to 100 degrees in this room to our final temperature of 30 degrees. Now you might be wondering about this liquid valve and it's being used because the fresh water coming out of the steam turbines would end up flashing and cracking in these pipes whenever these metal tiles got too hot. Well, 
by having this liquid valve step down to one kilo per second, because remember each steam turbine produces two kilos per second when it's active, it separates the blobs into one kilo packets that can't flash until it gets back here into this room. Now you'll notice the steam turbine's not running despite the fact that it's 200 degrees in here. And that's because this battery can only hold 20 kilojoules worth of power. And this gold volcano is going to go dormant in 11 cycles. But this system will run even in your dormancy periods because of all the potential energy, i.e. heat, sitting in this room. All of it is sitting in the form of not only the steam, but also the gold. And to ensure that the steam turbine is only running when absolutely necessary, we have it connected to a thermo sensor that says, hey, don't turn on the steam turbine until it's above 200 degrees in here or when the battery is below 60% full. And it's for that reason that this system will continue running through that dormancy period up to a certain point. If you have a volcano with a very long dormancy period, for instance, this one is only about 60 cycles, but let's say you have one that's 70 or 80 cycles, there's a chance that due to battery drain and there just not being any more heat left in here, that all the steam will condense back into water and the whole system will run out of power. But fear not, as soon as this gold volcano starts erupting again, the heat will start generating, the steam turbine will turn back on, charging the smart battery and providing power to all of our equipment that needs it, such as the thermal aqua tuner. Now, truth be told, I love this system. It is highly, highly efficient. But there's one reason why it's not my favorite. And that's because of one of its benefits and the fact that it's self-powered, which means the massive amount of power being generated by this steam turbine is not going back onto our grid. And there are times in our standard volcano tamer, for instance, right now, look at all the wattage being provided by these steam turbines. 440 watts here, 370 watts here, and there's no draw. Thermo Aqua Tuner is not using any power, neither the auto sweep or the conveyor loader because, well, there's no metal. In this case, it looks like we had a little bit of copper spill out over here. I'll fix that in a minute. But this is about 800, almost 900 watts per second that our grid is gaining. But Echo, you've already shown us when we saw the 300 degree copper sitting here, how inefficient this system is. And that's true. What if there was a way to combine this system here with this system here? Well, there is. So let's make that change now. In order to do that, all I have to do is open up this area. I'm gonna take out this conveyor rail thermo sensor because it is no longer gonna control when the metal is allowed to flow. I'm gonna get rid of the loop remnants because we're not gonna be needing it anymore. And now our system's being controlled by this timer sensor. Set on one green and 75 red. Well, I'll be able to show you a little bit of math here in a minute to make this even more efficient. But the reason why this is going to work is now when the copper comes in, once every 75 seconds, it's going to let another copper through. Which means we're eventually going to have a back stock of copper, which is exactly what we want. Because that means the copper will sit on these rails for longer, allowing more heat to be drawn out of them before they hit our debris chiller. Now, an earlier point that I made is I like the auto sweeper over a little bit further. In this case, this copper volcano produces a lot of molten copper and occasionally pushes it over to the side. So I fixed that by putting the auto sweeper over a little bit. And after that eruption, look at all this copper sitting on this debris chiller. Notice it's already chilled, sitting at 21 degrees at one end and 24 at the other. But a lot more of the heat is being drained off the copper still on the rails inside of the room with this copper here already at 137 degrees and by doing that once again our thermo aqua tuner is not going to have to work as hard because there's less heat to have to transfer around and we're generating more power through these steam turbines by siphoning more out of the copper now a quick note on the math behind this timer sensor note that all the copper sitting on the rail minus the very last one is sitting at 20 kilos. Well, if I wanted to make sure we we're able to release as much as the volcano is generating, but doing it at the most efficient pace, we can figure it out due to the 20 kilo piles that it's moving. We know we have an average output of 317.4 grams per second, and that is over the life of this volcano. 
So all we need to do is take 20, divide it by 0.3174. And we do this because we want it in the same unit, in this case, kilograms. And 317.4 grams is 0.3 of a kilo. And in this volcano's case, the most efficient you could get it would be 120 kilo pile for every 63 seconds. And again, it's because this volcano produces like a beast. In the case of this gold volcano, to make sure we still have gold sitting here even throughout its dormancy period, we can do the same thing. Take 20, divide it by 0.278, and we get about 72 seconds. In the case of this volcano over here, 20 divided by 0.2702, and we get 74 seconds. And most of your volcanoes are gonna fall between 70 and 75 seconds. Hence the reason why, just as an easy number to remember, I just go one second for every 75. And if any of the case that you're like, well, I want more gold right now, but I still wanna be somewhat efficient, just up the grim duration. And that way, you'll get two little 20 kilo nuggets coming out every 75 seconds. The world is your oyster. So what else could we do to make this design even more efficient. Right now we're generating power and yet our batteries are chock full. Hence my final update for a design that I think is the most efficient, not only for your metal volcanoes closed system, but also for efficient power management in your colony itself. And the update is pretty simple to manage. Step one, we're just gonna add a battery and make sure our steam turbines are connected to it via automation wire. I like to set the battery at 9060 which is usually near the first power sources to be activated in the colony. For reference, the only one that is active more than 9060 in this colony is the hydrogen generator that is dealing with all the surplus hydrogen from our spawn, and it's set on a 9080. Now the steam turbines won't run unless the battery says they have to. But that could be an issue, right? What happens in the point where we just don't need very much power, and this volcano keeps erupting and erupting, and the steam in the room passes the overheat temperature of all this equipment. Well, for that, we just add a thermo sensor and tie it in with the automation on the steam turbines. I like to put it as close to the volcano and the equipment that is most vulnerable as possible. So I'll put it right here and then tie it in directly to the same automation wire that is connecting the batteries to the steam turbine. And then we just set it to above 200. And now these steam turbines will not run until A, the smart battery and the grid needs it, or it's above 200 degrees, which allows all that valuable heat to be drawn out of the copper as much as possible, and we're only using that power whenever our grid needs it. At this point, this copper volcano is 100% tamed and will last the test of time. We've sealed it in, we got rid of the liquid lock, and on top of that, I think you've gained about as much knowledge on taming metal volcanoes as I have to give. Before we head out, I'm going to show you some schematics just in case you want to duplicate any of these systems. We'll start with this system here. First, the plumbing, the rail system. Of important note with the rail system is make sure you do not put rails in front of these two tiles on the volcano. This is where that molten metal spawns and will melt your rails very quickly. And then the automation, and then we have the power, and then of course some settings. We have this battery set on 9060. We have the liquid valve set on one kilo or 1000 grams per second. We have this timer sensor set on one green and 75 red. And we have the cooling loop set at 30 degrees. Although you can set it to basically any temperature you want. There is a requirement in this situation to add some temperature shift plates. Because this system is so tight and closed in, you need to be able to spread the temperature around a little bit more than you do in this system. And then over on this system here, here's our plumbing, here's the rail system, here's the automation, and then we have the power. And as far as settings, your thermo sensors are always set around above 200. The thermo sensor is at 25 degrees, and the timer is set out of one out of 63. But again, one out of 70 or one out of 75 is gonna be close enough to get you what you're looking for. During all these examples, you have noticed a different amount of steam turbines in front of each volcano. And that has to do with the type of volcano that we're taming. My personal recommendation, for iron volcanoes, I like to put three steam turbines. For gold volcanoes, I use one. For everything in between, 
I used to, such as in the example of this copper volcano and this cobalt volcano. Also take note that is only on my hybrid design, whereas this design here, you'll only ever have one steam turbine. In fact, even with the hybrid design that I've done, you can easily get away with less steam turbines. And what you'll probably end up with is a longer term power supply versus that burst power that more steam turbines will provide you. Well, I hope you've learned a ton about metal volcanoes and enjoyed yourself while doing it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of these designs and any modifications you would make, or if there's a specific design that you prefer. Until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.